southbound. I'm gonna give it. A. Where are you seeing those from? Three. Where are you see? Are these mine? This uh, it must be. Yeah, popular Dude, with you friends. You gotta watch that. Have you watched that? Uh no. It's pretty. You cool. watch the nightmare? Yeah, it's all right. I started watching it and I kind of I turned it off at the part with the spider. Oh yeah. <laughs> Funny yeah, yeah. enough. No, but anyway. Yeah, so this is popular. I, I bet if you go to the popular with friends, it'll be okay. all my shit. Because that's all my shit. Because then there's the new stuff, which yeah. is just people. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. All right, so hey, what's going on? This what is uh, Blood Feud Podcast, episode number... 13. 13, is it? Fitting. Oh, is it fitting? Fitting. I, I mean, I, I feel like any movie would be. I guess so. <laughs> um. So before we get into it, uh, this is Neil. This is Sam. I guess just a couple of housekeeping things. Indeed. So... um. For anyone that's interested, uh, there is a website called Letterboxd, uh, all one word, Letterboxd with, I don't know, does boxed normally have an E in it? Yeah. So Letterboxd with yeah. no E Yeah. between the X and the D. I can't figure out, is this like a box office kind of thing? What is this Letterboxd, what is Letterboxd? Yeah, I have no idea in relation to? But anyway, so Letterboxd is basically social, it's a social media site for movies. So instead of Facebook or Twitter, right. you have a Letterboxd account. And, and if you've heard of Goodreads, this is basically Goodreads for film. Yes. Which so is sweet. If you are interested, you can go on Letterboxd, uh, you can search people, um, you can search for uh, my name, which is Neil, I, can you just search by name? I just searched Neil Hazel. Okay, and, yeah, and, so you can just yeah. search, search by name, Neil Hazel. I'm just um, Sam Boy Terry and... Uh, and uh, what it basically lets you do is you can, well, what we do on Letterboxd is when you've seen a movie, you've clicked that you've seen it, and then you can give it a rating out of five stars. You can write reviews for it. Um, I don't write reviews for every movie that I've seen, and I don't have every movie that I've mm -hmm. seen on my Letterboxd account because that would take too long. Yeah. So I'm kind of just adding stuff as I think about it. But it is current uh, up through, from 2015 through now. And what... What I think is cool about this too is that you, you can just use it almost like a catalog of everything you've seen. Yeah. It's so hard when people at least ask me this question: "What's your favorite movie or movies?" I, I, I right. can never think about it. So now I have, and you can get an app too. There's a phone app. You there's can, an app. Yeah, there's an app. Is it, the app new? I don't know. My I, I told my buddies about this, and they got the app. I didn't um, know there was an app. Yeah. I do have an app similar to this, but it doesn't have the. Uh like social okay. media aspect of it, I'll well, have to look at that. Well, apparently there's an app, and yeah, you can just pull this up and say, "Hey," here, and it, you get you even get to pick your four top favorite movies, and you can change them at any time. You can change everything around, and uh, it's a great way to just kind of catalog everything you've seen. Yeah, it's it, fun. I think it's fun. I've been having a blast with it. Um, so yeah, Letterbox. Go make a make a make a profile. I yeah, recommend we'll follow it. you back. Yeah, follow us. Yeah, let's talk movies. And we're we're working on. I'm not. We're not really completely versed in how Letterbox works yet. We might just have to make like a separate Blood Feud account. But we're working mm -hmm. on making a way for us to have like a list with like here's a Blood Feud movie that we did. Listen to the podcast here, and then you would see like Sam's five out of five stars and Neil's out of five stars. Right. So there's that, and then one other thing, just a general housekeeping thing is. Um, I am now a featured guest on the Gross Misconduct radio show, which is a um, kind of like a podcast, but they just kind of, it's like a Dave and Chuck the Freak mm -hmm. type of thing. And yeah. I'll be going on there once a month to just talk about um, just movies in general. So if you want to uh, listen to that, if you just Google Gross Misconduct live, I think they're on Radio Xenu. It's a online streaming radio thing. So yeah. All right. That's so exciting. yeah. Anything, anything else that I, I, th I think, I think that's about it. Um, let's get, let's get into episode thirteen today. Yep, we're talking about a brand new movie. Yeah, uh, that this month it might have came out on the came festivals out last month? year. Well, but, yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, yeah, that, but it, it, it was a video on demand release DVD. I don't know if it came out on DVD, but um, Southbound, Southbound. Um, I didn't really know. My, I think we watched the trailer, which I don't know if we always do that, but we watched the trailer. Yeah, the trailer. Uh, I just don't want to say. I don't feel like it really gave too much away. Yeah, no. So if you want to watch really the cool. trailer for this one, I can recommend the trailer. Um, yeah, I oh, and you know, overall, I I really I liked this movie a lot. I think. Yeah. I think um, I have a lot to say, but um, one of the most interesting things about it, which I didn't even know. 
going into it, it didn't it didn't make it uh, nothing about the way it was advertised made it apparent that it was an anthology film. Yep. And it's probably one of the best anthology films I've seen. Yeah, so I thought I was thinking about that uh, on my way in this morning, this afternoon, and I, I was like, well, how do I like this in comparison to something like VHS or the ABCs of Death? Yeah, I was thinking about the ABCs um, of Death, too. And for me, um, it is it is similar to those movies. If you like those movies, you're going to love this movie. Um, but for me, the difference between Southbound and a movie like VHS is um, I feel that there are there's five segments to Southbound. Yeah. Um, depending on how you look at it, maybe a little spoiler there. Um, and I don't think there's a weak one in the bunch. I think they're all pretty good. Especially because of the way that this movie connects all of them and yes. segues them. Yeah. So it's not like VHS where you've got, it's not a frame story right. essentially, which is where it's not, uh, you know, VHS, you have these people finding these videotapes and watching them. Uh, Southbound is one coherent story from start to finish. And it's kind of just uh, as these different stories kind of intersect and flow into each other. There's four different directors. And I think it's remarkable that it doesn't feel disjointed. You can't really... Like when I was watching the film, I didn't really think about it because I didn't know that there were five different directors, five different, more than five different writers for each story that happens. Mm -hmm. Film does a very good job of not letting you know that there's different directors. It's very segued. Right. Um, And when you think about it afterward, you can kind of Yeah, I was just about to say that. You can tell where, you can see the stylistic differences, but Um, there's no, uh, there's not really a disconnect between them. And uh, just want to point out that, like I said, if you're a fan of VHS, I think almost... All of the directors of Southbound, or a good majority of the four, um, oh. had something featured in VHS. Okay, so Ra- Radio Silence did some stuff on VHS. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, you mentioned a minute ago that not one of the stories, in your opinion, is... Uh, w- would you say? Uh, weak. Weak. Because there's some VHS... Uh, I like the VHS series overall, but there are some of the aspects, there's some of the segments that I'm like, that's just bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I agree to some extent, but the one thing I do want to say about the format of this movie is that the whole is definitely greater than the sum yes. of its parts. So I didn't, I didn't realize that I liked this movie until the very end. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, although I... I was definitely digging the the aesthetic and the world because mm-hmm. it is a world. It's all it's a definitely a shared universe. Yeah, that was being created. Five stories. Um, but you know, I just think that we don't really get enough time with each of the stories. That's my biggest complaint. And none yep. of them ever seem extremely compelling, though they are all very solid and they all connect into the next one. Very cool, and it all comes full circle in a in a cool way, just like yeah. a movie like Pulp Fiction or uh, Trick or Treat. Yeah. Yeah. would so yeah going off that this movie's an hour and a half long a little less than an hour and a half i think it really could have been a lot better if they gave each segment an extra five minutes yeah to maybe flesh out some yeah. ideas yeah um um yeah i feel like that that covers my basic thoughts on it yeah i i i it's a very cool. I mean, there's definitely like a not like the show Twilight Zone, maybe a little bit, but it there's does, a Twilight. Yeah. The, the whole movie is a Twilight Zone, and it's cool that each story just kind of builds upon mm-hmm. the the world that's being developed. I do think that I want. I don't want to talk about it in depth now, but there's a certain um, element to the movie that it's revealed very quickly, and I would have liked more subtlety and more reservation in the way that this element was handled. But I mean. Other elements like the radio. There's a narrator on the radio, uh, which is uh, the narr- the radio DJ is Larry Fessenden from uh, We Are Still Here. Oh, that's really cool, and that makes total sense. And he just kind of this narrator serves to connect the world, all the stories. Mm-hmm. Um, very foreboding, too. Yeah, very I've, sinister. I, I should go. I should have went back and because I feel like he's almost um, foreshadowing. Yes, because yeah, because yeah, the way yeah, it yeah. works is. Um, at the start of every segment, there is a little snippet from the radio, uh, the disc jockey, the DJ. Yeah. 
and I almost because you, you get the feeling that it's going to be kind of like hinting at what's going to happen in the segment. Yeah. But I would have to go back after knowing what happens to make sure that. Yeah. You and know. you'll find, I mean, I, I can't remember everything that the narrator says, but especially for the last story, um, it's called The Way In. He definitely foreshadows a little bit about what's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, And that's pretty cool. I love, I love this idea of like this weird, I don't know if the film, sometimes it's more upfront about what is happening and other times it's less upfront. It's a little bit heavy handed with the, um, the kind of hell aspect but i don't think you have to interpret this movie as a kind of hell aspect as 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 a hellish thing um you could just look at it as kind of like a weird bermuda triangle yeah kind of thing yeah and, there is uh, an aspect to that anyway we'll talk about that more in depth uh all in all what's your what's your impressions uh who do you think would enjoy this movie before we kind of get into spoilers and, um uh, i think it's a good movie uh like i said a little bit more detail explanation would have been appreciated I think if you are a anthology horror fan, you're going to love it. And I think it's also just a good movie uh, because it does flow really well. Yeah. That I think it's just a pretty pretty solid movie overall. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so so that that's about it. I, I have the same thoughts. Let's get into some spoilers. spoilers. Um, and uh, again, this is Southbound. So... The movie... What, there's opens, these five stories yeah. and... It's the first one really and the last four. one. Right, there's really only four. The first story is called The Way Out, and the last one is called The Way In, and the, those are kind of the full circle yes. movements. Which is interesting because it does the entire film repeat itself. Yeah, you know um, I mean? which is which is one thing I was... If, if you are looking at this movie as all these characters are in hell and they have to mm-hmm. keep reliving these moments... You could look at it like that. Right. There's this repetitive aspect. It's all a circle. The circles of hell, right? Mm. You know? Um, anyway, but with this opening sequence, you might have seen it in the trailer. Uh, you got two dudes driving in a truck listening to this narrator on the radio, and they there's these things in the distance. It, like, when I first saw it, I thought, like, aliens maybe, um, but then, like, once you get a closer look, they're, like, angels of death. Yeah. Almost. Grim Reaper. And and this is like this was one of my biggest complaints with the movie because I loved I liked the design I thought these things were really creepy especially the way they just linger in the background mm-hmm. and I think the movie gave them away too soon I think you get an up close and personal shot of them way too soon, um, but that's just me because I like I like it when things are built up rather than just you know it, it seemed a little anticlimactic and there's not really another creature like that in the movie they come back at the end yeah. And um, you know what? I read online um, that they actually appear in every segment. Really? Just kind of like... Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't notice it, though, um, which I feel like I would have noticed, but they're just kind of like floating in the background. There is a cool moment at the end of this first story when um, this character is trapped in a house, and there's these beads hanging from the ceiling, and if you're mm. paying attention, they're kind of not supposed to be beads. They're the They're like the the lower half of these creatures yeah and then it shows you the creature there's so, some cool nuances yeah actually speaking of that um i kind of i'm almost jumping ahead to the end oh, to that's the okay. last segment because there's a lot of stuff that happens in this first segment that um either thinking back on or on a rewatch you wouldn't notice and i don't know if we should talk about it now or what when we think? get to the last segment what do you think um, is going to be more effective? I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess if we're assuming that everyone that's listening to this has yeah, watched well, it. If you have something you really want to say, let's, let's... So, there's a lot of parallels in the way out with the way in, obviously. Um, and to be to, to clarify, the way out, the first story and the last story, it's the same people. Yeah, so let's just, let's just run through that real quick. So we'll start with the very last segment. Let's just do that. We'll start with the last segment and then work okay. our way around, which is the way in. And this uh, features a... Um, like a family? Yeah, like a, a daughter family and with two a parents. college age. Yeah. yeah. And they're on a vacation before she goes to college, they're mm-hmm. saying, right? Yeah. And they're at this motel. Or it's like a cabin of sorts, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's a house. And basically, it kind of takes on uh, the stranger's vibe yeah. or the purge vibe. Yeah. Where... Um, Masked the, intruders. Yep. 
come to assail them. And you know what? That's one of the cool things about this movie is it kind of plays through all these different horror genres. You've got almost like a torture, not torture, but like medical. You've yeah. got like an elder, like a um, Lovecraftian type story. You've got some demonic rituals. Demonic, yeah, that's the word I'm looking You've for. You've got some... Um, creatures yeah just a lot of stuff like that anyway that is cool i didn't think about that so these masked assailants break it and they kill the mom the dad they let the daughter go and it's kind of in the way that they kill these people specifically the mom i guess that the parallels come in because the way this segment ends is um with the dead bodies of the, the family. The family. That's where the skeleton Grim Reaper creatures come from in the first segment. They come out of yeah, their bodies. And that and was cool. And but it's also it's coming from out of the ground too. Yeah. So it makes you wonder, like, is this some kind of demonic presence that's possessing their bodies? Is it just because they're vengeful spirits? Stuff like that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But so and then going back to the way out, the first segment, so um when they're running away from these things they end up at like a uh, a cafe and in this first this first segment is supposed to be after the last segment when yeah. they've killed this family so they've done the job they're running away trying to get out of the desert and it never really tells you what the job's for and it, it never tells you like the the father of this daughter was supposed to have done something to cause this yeah. murder this and he he's got a uh well he's got a picture right yeah yeah. Of a woman. You know, the the movie never really goes out of its way to give you too much backstory, and I don't mind that because mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't really overextend itself. Right. It leaves it leaves a lot of things open to interpretation. That's okay. So again, we're in this first scene and they're at uh they're going to like this gas station diner. Yep, and they're getting chased by these things and uh as they leave the diner, the road ends up coming back to the diner, and they're kind of looping and, and looping. Deja vu. Yeah, yeah, they can't escape. Um, but like the people in the diner seem to know that right. it's doing that, and then eventually they stop, and the one guy says, "I'm not running anymore." Um, they've come to collect. They've come to collect, <laughs> and uh, that's what he says. He dies. The other one. What he? How does he end up at the at the house? I oh think. well. First of all, the, the 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 man who is still trying to escape, uh, the death is pretty cool. I yeah, mean, this and so angel, you know what? The skeletal angel of death, what it kind of sticks its hand all the way down his throat. That is the parallel for me. So in the in the cafe when they first get there, he goes into the bathroom to clean off the blood, and he like pulls his t-shirt up to clean his body, and when he does that, the the creature grabs the t-shirt behind him and pulls him, and it has him by his face like the t-shirts wrapped around his face and pulling him back and in the way in segment this guy kills the wife by does he put like oil or gas on the t-shirt he shoves a t-shirt down her throat and that kills her she suffocates oh and so it sticks it's yeah and then so when he finally when this creature kills him it sticks its claw blade whatever you want to call it down his throat the same way the t-shirt goes down i thought that was kind of cool and i didn't realize that until right um what happens to his accomplice is less clear because he is allowed to escape by these creatures but not really because he runs back to their motel Mm -hmm. and becomes trapped in this infinite cycle where he's uh kind of trying to find his daughter but she's not really there right and uh then it kind of cuts out to this creature in the house with him. I thought this was one of the less impactful scenes. I really didn't, it really didn't move yeah, me I, this, either way. Because I was kind of worried. I was like, if this is how this is yeah. going to be, it's going to be kind of lame because yeah. it's not really clear what's going on. But I think the full circle nature of it really cleared some yeah. stuff up. Is it, it's not the same house that they were in when they, when they killed the family. Is hmm. it? I think I it, it could be. Could be. There is blood on the walls yeah. as he's walking into this house. You know, and it's hard to say. Um, I, I don't know if the film... I think the film might have given us a little too little information yeah. here. Um, but, you know, that's okay. And it's just another instance of me kind of being led to believe that all of these things are these people being trapped in their own private hell right. because of things they've done. 
uh, which is fine. It very quickly segues over to a different door in the motel where we yep. meet our next characters. Which is a female band. Yeah, this like, was cool. Probably like a punk rock band. Yeah, they're you like a, the vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, keep this in mind, but the band is called the White Tights. Did you notice the call out to them in the next segment or the segment after? Yeah, the White Tights. Is there's that what a, you said? There's a poster on the wall. Oh, uh, I didn't for notice their, that. For That's their cool. show. Yeah. Um, so they're on tour. Uh, their van breaks down um, on the side of the road, and this family couple couple yeah picks the, offers to give them a ride to their house. Their neighbor has a a van similar to theirs, and they they'll get the the tire. They think their tire yeah. pops, and they'll get the tire from them, and then send them on their way. They're not gonna get that tire. They might get the tire. You don't know that. They don't get it. Um, yeah, th- so this story is kind of about like a... A cult. A cultish kind of thing. You're going to recognize the tropes, but it's cool. Apparently, mm-hmm. um, the the main character, um, Sadie, has... Uh, has she let somebody die? One of their friends Yeah, well, has they died. make reference to the fact that they were like at a party, and she went to hook up with this guy... Um, assuming maybe she was supposed to be the DD and their friend drove home, presumably drunk and dies. Crashes oh, so dies. that I didn't realize that I because think, then what happens to Sadie that makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, right. I think Which that's what next. it was meant to be. Yeah. Um, so her her maybe her sin is that she has let. If you're gonna follow this hell metaphor, is that she has let. Her, they're all blaming her. She blames herself for her friend's death. Uh, yeah, I think it's more so she blames herself right. because. Yeah. Um, because like her friends kind of freak out and it, it it's got this really like um vibe that what her friend because her friends start saying stuff like oh you let her die blah 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 but like that's very um uncharacteristic of her friends at least from yeah. what we're seeing well and they shown. eat they have this meal with the family where they eat this mystery meat yeah. and sadie doesn't because she's do a you, vegetarian if you had to take a guess at what that meat was what do you think it might have been because i was wondering that do you think it was like people or um like a demon maybe like because it's really weird looking yeah it is super weird uh, i don't know it was cool i don't i didn't it wasn't nothing for some reason nothing in this movie seemed cliche even though it was a lot of recycled ideas um and uh, you know the meat transforms sadie's friends into uh yeah, vegetables basically. they get sick and yeah. and then like the the cult like gives them a drink yeah, and there's these two brothers at the, the table. The brothers as are well. really creepy. Yeah, they do everything brothers. in unison. They're drinking this yeah. liquid, which the the other two girls oh. eventually drink and become. And they they say, "I thought there were four of you," which was a really weird yeah. line. And well, and the mother of this family says, "I'm sorry about uh, they." I forget her name. I forget the girl's name that oh. died. I'm sorry about blah blah blah. So, which is who the girl that Sadie Ava, blames herself? Ava. No, I don't know. Alex, I don't know. It's not Alex. Steve. Um, Steve, that is a girl's name. Yeah, um, and anyway, eventually, again, this story doesn't really go anywhere that compelling, but Sadie's yeah, friend... Another, again, I wish it just was like a little bit more. Just right. give me a little bit more. Her friends become these vegetables for this ritual, and they kind of are... Everybody's trying to kill um, Sadie. But again, there's really cool imagery and stuff with the way that these girls become like kind of like the shining girls mm-hmm. the girls in the shining like kind of like twinsies like in sync and they do these things in sync cool aesthetic stuff like that uh but sadie yeah. ends up getting away though because she, she walks out yeah she she walks outside she falls asleep wakes up walks outside and sees they're doing this kind of ritual and they see her they chase her she hides she gets away and she eventually makes it to the main road yeah, and she sees this car coming. And this was like a really tragic moment. Because yeah. you're like, wow, is she going to make it? And it cuts to inside the car, and the dude is on his phone. And as soon as it showed that, I was just like, oh, no. Yeah, you know where it's headed. And this is probably the best segue this in the was, movie. This was my favorite segment of the movie, too. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Um, so She is she is she taken out like, yeah. a, like a doe in the light. Um, is that... Is that a common metaphor that's used? Like a dough in the light. Pizza dough? Okay, well. Pizza dough, light pizza dough for your... Anyways. So yeah, she gets hit, and then this is where it transitions into the next segment. The um, third 
segment. Yes. The accident. Which the last one was called the siren. Right. I didn't mention that. Um, in this segment, um, the the Lucas, the man in the car, my favorite performance of the film. Yeah, the has to try to save the life of Sadie, who uh, is in critical yeah, condition. Yeah. So he hits her. He doesn't know what to do. He calls nine one one. They're like, we can't find you we can't trace your phone uh he, where are you he's like i see a city my gps won't pick it up um and they lead him to a hospital yeah they're like we'll go to the city and then like people so he's talking to the 911 dispatcher and then she patches him into the like a doctor to the doc e- emt it's an right. emt lady this is already in the hospital and then finally the a surgeon patches him oh that's right which is really I'm weird sorry. um But so throughout this, they're kind of talking him through the procedure of saving Sadie. Right, because this hospital is vacant. Very creepy. The presentation is The whole town is vacant. Right, yeah. And um, so he he is the one that is tasked with performing the surgery under the direction of the very disturbing and ominous uh, surgeon and 911 agent on the They slowly reveal, like almost accidentally, that they know information like... Uh, they know they, his they, name. They know his name, and then they say something about needing to. Uh, she has broken ribs or something, and he's like, "I never told you that she had broken yeah, ribs." Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, it doesn't matter. You have to do it. You have to like." Yeah. Um, and actually, this was one of the more grotesque visuals in the film. So he's yeah. carrying Sadie into the hospital, and during that, because of the way her leg was broken. Her leg actually rips at the knee. Yeah. Oh, lots of brutal. Oh. It, this is what you were talking about with kind of a nod to the torture yeah. genre of horror. body horror. I guess and, uh, you could call it. Yeah, I mean, he it's just it's it's so um it's so brutal how he just has to he basically has to cut this woman open, stick his arm inside of her, and collapse they, her she, uh, her like lung. Depress or... the lung. I forget what the the surgeon keeps saying. Depress the lung or um, compress, compress the lung. Compress the lung. Oh man, it was making me cringe. Very good, very good scene. Um, and this whole scene ends <laughs> with his arm inside her chest mouth. as well as her mouth because he had to put this tube in her mouth. It's stuck mm-hmm. in her mouth. And uh, she dies. Yeah. And the surgeon on the, and, and the 911 agent on the phone are just laughing. Yeah. So And, like, maniacal. I was kind of expecting maybe, like, somewhere this to go somewhere. Like, I, I, it never really tells you what their motives are. Right. Um, cause I think it becomes pretty apparent, obvious actually in the next segment that these aren't actual doctors, or di- dispatchers or EMT right. or anything. Right. So, um, yeah. Um, they tell him he can leave and he's like, you know, am I going to get in trouble for this? And they're like, eh, don't worry about it. Um, oh yeah. His wife has been calling him this whole time and he's just kind of like, I'm coming home. I forget. I, I don't, it's not too significant about that, but, uh, they give him new clothes. They give him a new car. Yeah. That was really weird. Cause he sees his car and then he's got a new car. Yeah. It, it kind of went back to that circle <laughs> aspect. Yeah. Where, Cause he sees it and he turns around and he has and, a new and one. And the shadow and the light in, in this, in this mm-hmm. story, it's all red. It's all dark. It's very cool. Um, cool use of, and, and but he, he, uh, the person on the there's a person talking to him and she's just like you can go you know yeah. and he does and you know he the, gets off pretty easy he does compared and to the rest of the you could characters. look at maybe he maybe if you're looking at the movie as a circle the way out and the way in maybe he will be stuck here and have mm-hmm. to re- maybe if you maybe nobody can escape maybe right. he will keep reliving this night because he does right? drive off um, and then that's where it segues to a phone booth where the woman who is talking to him is and she's like this gross like hillbilly right and it was supposed to be a 911 contact not yeah. at all not at all so, so maybe um again if you're thinking of this as like a, like a bermuda triangle or yeah. something like that like because yeah. he, he dials 911 you see on his phone it's 911 but maybe like it just goes to um this town oh i just saw it because I, I got this plan right here um so it's right at the end of this segment you get to see the uh the poster? No. The... What is it? The dead skeleton. Where? Um, sorry, guys. We may have to... No, it's take okay. Take a pause. We're looking for those skeletons. So right at the end, if you if you want to go back and check it out, he's driving away. He looks at his phone, and it says 911, three hours, 20 minutes. That's how long the call was. He wipes some blood off. 
And then it cuts there it is. to cool. him driving by. Yeah, and so. it's right in the light. It's got to be in every skit then. And I want yeah. you to pause it right, not here, right here. The trap. Trap. Yeah. Okay, Which so. I noticed when I was watching it. Uh, so <laughs> there's we, a diner or there's some kind of store that's. It's a bar. It's a bar and it's called Trap. The Trap. <laughs> you know, it's kind um, of some overt messaging. And right that's there, what we cut but. to next. And that's the next segment, which is called uh, Jailbreak, I believe. But that that message that the sign sets the tone for this whole yeah you'll be able to predict what happens if you just read that message trap. and this i think is the most um vague yeah, i guess yeah. um of the segments um and it, it basically so the lady walks back into the bar there's a cool tracking shot that follows her and they're just kind of you know shit talking well, there's a bunch of characters yeah. in the bar, a bunch Spit of grizzly characters. Back and forth. Um, this this uh, I don't want to call the skit. This story is Second cool half. because you kind of just got this guy, kind of similar to the way out and the way in, coming into this yep. zone, this world, trying to take somebody out. He's trying to save somebody. His sister. His sister. And this is cool. I I, I think personally, this might have been the weakest story. I think it's because it's the most vague. Um, but this is the cool the way it's handled because he kind of holds up the bar with a shotgun and we find out that these people in the bar are not people. They're like vampires or werewolves They're or beasts. creatures. They're, They're yeah. something, but they they never fully transform into yeah. them. But they yeah. like the one guy's eyes get messed up and he gets his yeah. hand shot and off. He and howls in this beastly. He says, uh, the tone. Guy, "He says, you know, that's not going to kill you, but I bet it hurts." <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's cool. Um, so he gets the bartender. He's like, take me to my sister. And uh, and the bartender's kind of like, okay, whatever. And they go to like the back of a convenience store? Yeah, it's like a tattoo parlor is what it tattoo is. Tattoo parlor, okay. Um, this is a really sweet scene because this bartender has a tattoo, tattoo of, an of an eye, eye. on his face. Yeah. Um, th- you know, this is cool. It wasn't, it, it's not really explained. Are they it, at... Oh, the, they're at the place where the next door is gonna yeah. take. It's like a, it's like a fast food. It's weird. I'm not sure what this. It's like a convenience yeah. store. There's a tattoo parlor in the back, but at at one point, this bartender he's getting the shotgun pointed at him, and he puts the eye up to one of his eyes. Mm-hmm. And it again, this was cool. It wasn't really used to any great effect, but he can use that eye, and you see a point of view shot where he's seeing other figures that are around. Creatures, yeah. Uh, who's this guy's name? It's um Danny, Danny, who is trying to save his sister Jesse, and uh, the the bartender just kind of laughs and says, "You're fucked," you know. Yeah, well, and it's weird too because he when he puts the when it shows that point of view shot, it shows a door in the wall. Oh, yeah, it blinked. Did you yeah. see that? Oh, yeah, I just you didn't know. That. Yeah, no. it's so cool. So the tattooed eye blinks. Really cool. And then he uses the eye to to reveal things. A door to reveal portals. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It goes you know, through, and he finds his sister, and she's doing these tattoos, but like, like old school, like tribal tattoos, yeah. where you have like you're like a club on the on the needle, and you're like tapping it. Oh yeah, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and. uh Basically, Danny just finds out that she doesn't want to leave, that she, she, she belongs here. But it never really says, you know, right. what what are they doing? Are yeah. they? I almost thought maybe if you look at it, at first I thought, because it kind of reveals towards the end that they're not good people, but maybe yeah. I thought they were like protecting the world from these people, yeah. these creatures, but... Well, she says this place was made for people like me. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's moments like that where I was a little disappointed that the hell thing was getting pushed so heavily but you could look at this not like that and i don't think it gets pushed that heavily it's just i i wasn't really a fan of them kind of telling us that this is supposed to be hell most likely i would have rather been more ambiguous as to what it was especially considering they're going they're all going south yeah southbound and the fact that there's a pentagram on the cover of this movie however you could still look at this i think there is ambiguity and uh it's not necessarily a cut and dry depiction of hell all the time. Sometimes yeah. it's a little weirder than that. This is, and you know, so he tries to take uh, Danny, uh, Jesse, Jesse with him. And, and the way that segment ends is really weird. Yeah, because he goes to drive, and she's like, "You know, you can't go out there." And he's like driving off into Cause the, the desert. Because ro- the road ends, and they tell you never leave the road. Right. Um, the road ends like it ends of its own accord, and he tries this, and this is kind of cool. It's. He like steps on it. They're flying, 
and she keeps saying like don't slow down yeah. something like that yeah. like you can't slow down and like you can kind of hear these things coming behind them and crazy lights around them red yeah. light and uh you know so the, the car ends up dying of course and uh a bunch of dudes just take Danny out of the car and rip his clothes off, and uh, yeah, we don't really know like, what happens to him. They're like almost they're kind of like zombies, maybe. Yeah. But and they look like they're gonna rip him apart. Is what it looks or like. Or turn right? them into one of them because they kind of got this yeah. like white powder. Yeah. On them. Yeah. She Jesse gets behind the wheel. She drives to back to the place, and then this is where yeah. we get back to the way in. Um, because that's where we meet up with the family. Yeah, and this segue was my least favorite. She just kind of drives back, um, and then we meet the next family. Because by now, yeah. I, I had a higher standard of what the segues were going to be like because of the um, that middle segue with the girl getting hit by the car. And, by, you know, by this time, I was just kind of like, well, that segue was kind of half-assed. But it's yeah. okay. Um, this story, again, it's le- w- the beginning of it is less compelling than the you end. You know what? I forgot to say this. Um, during the... Uh What's the segment called before jailbreak? Uh, where he's got the accident. Your, the accident. In the accident, I thought it was really cool that you have characters from two different segments interacting. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they don't. Yeah. They don't yeah. interact yeah. Yes. because yes. she's you know well de- every, almost dead. But her fate in the previous story directly impacted the next one. Yes. And I felt like yep. that was the only story where that really happened, besides the way in and the way out. But even this family that we see at the beginning of this last story, The Way In, just kind of serves as a way to bring the way out characters back in. Yeah. And in that way, it was a little bit dissatisfying. I, it's moments like this where the movie feels more like a, an anthology film than yeah. less of a cohesive experience. It's okay, though, because the moment when we have these masked invaders pull their masks off, and it's the... I want to get their names. It's... um. Maybe it's not going to give me their names. Uh, Mitch and Jack. Yes. And a friend who has... They, they have a friend that gets killed. He's not important. There's three of them. One of them dies, right? Um, it, it's a cool moment because I didn't really expect it. I don't know if you were, saw it coming. No, I did not. Because I I, obviously I felt like there had to be a reveal, um, either what the guy did or who these people were. Yeah. Uh, but they're never... Uh, I never really thought it would be... Mitch and Jack. Yeah. From. And that's cool. Uh, at, at this point in the movie, I was kind of losing steam. I was like, I was losing steam a little bit. I was I was losing a little steam just because of the transition. How was your steam doing? The steam was declining. Okay. But but now when the I invaders are... I think it is are, the same house. Or it's got... I'm good. Yeah. It's got a very similar vibe to the house. Plus that, there was blood in the house, the motel yeah. that he gets trapped in. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, I think so. I think so. Um. Yeah, but no, I think this revitalized me and gave me my faith back that this was a pretty cool experience um, because it came full circle. And then, yeah, so they kill all these people. They kill the daughter, too. And then these the ain't, the, the weird things come out of them, and I thought that was so cool. Yeah. It's very creepy, very Lovecraftian, but also just very gross. Very little you know? crimson peaky. Yeah. Um, but yeah. this is kind of where it gives that uh, implication that these events are going to continue forever because it does, um, by way of the segues, um, suggest that all these events are impacting one another. Yeah. Um, because if you think about it, like Jesse wouldn't have ended up at the same, uh, at that place at the same time as the family. If I guess Danny wouldn't have come to rescue her. And we are aware that this place, this event where Danny is coming to rescue her is mm-hmm. happening right after um, Lucas is leaving the hospital. And that happens because of uh, Sadie running into the coal. And that happens at the same motel that Mitch and Jack were at. Mm-hmm. So I do want to say that. Now that we finally are seeing these creatures kind of coming out of the ground, uh, one thing that I was thinking about them throughout the whole movie is the effects. I wasn't the biggest fan of their look, not necessarily their design, but just their animation. It looks it, a little Tim Burton-ish, bad. you know. It, uh, yeah, no, it is very they're robotic almost, yeah. which it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ever think like this is bad. I would have liked to see more conventional effect with them yeah. uh, it just seemed a little bit but you know it, what this movie was probably pretty low budget yeah so and you can slide. you can they're the that's the only real like animation besides maybe the eye tattoos and some other stuff that was mm-hmm. happening and it just it kind of showed 
Sure, yeah. It showed. Um, but that's okay, because it was cool. And, uh, yeah, then they escape the house, and we cut to them at the beginning of the movie. The radio narrator comes back, and that's another reason why this movie's good, is the narrator mm-hmm. does a great job, and he's tying all these stories together with the transitions. And if more anthology films made an effort to do this, I think VHS kind of makes an effort to do that. But I don't it has the frame story. Yeah, but I, I just... I don't know. I, did, I didn't find that nearly as compelling as this, uh, because... This kind of built a world, whereas a, yeah. a movie like VHS just kind of showed us a couple stories and some creepy stuff in between. Um, and that's the movie. And um, overall, I enjoyed it. You yeah. know? It made me, uh, made me laugh. It made me cry. Yeah, I... Uh, I don't know. It didn't I, make I, me do either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I cried quite a bit. No, um... Yeah, it was it was a good watch, and yeah, uh, there's sci-fi it. elements, there's horror elements. I mean, more obviously more horror elements. It's than definitely sci-fi. too. It's rewatchable, I think, because of the fact that it it cycles, um, and especially I kind of want to rewatch it just to see if I can find the uh, all five the of angels, the other angels. Well, would there be? There'd be three obviously more there's of them. the way out and the way in. So we saw the one main. at the end of the accident. The accident. So we there's, there's gotta one, be one in the siren and one in jailbreak. Unless, Unless that kind of counts for both, and then right. it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know what I mean? Like, there's a surprising amount of nuance in this movie where you probably could watch this movie and think, uh, that's pretty straightforward. You know what? Because I just saw it um, talking about the effects. The effects when, is it Jack or Mitch? I don't remember. But when he dies... With the hook down at the blade down his throat, mm-hmm. that was pretty good, and it looked uh, yeah not the yeah. not that was practical, but the after the when he's the on damage, the ground the and his jaw, yeah. that's very creepy looking, yeah. very good, and that's a conventional effect. And if there would have been a little more of that, it could have been even better. But uh, there's not really much that I think holds the movie back. It does a pretty good job, besides the fact that the stories are just a little bit too vague for yeah, your own I good, Yeah, I think right? that's like really the only you complaint know? you can make. All the performances are pretty solid. Yeah, I don't think there's anything... Like, it's not the writing. There's not bad writing, no, I don't think. solid but, movie. Solid little flick. Yeah. Southbound. Um, southbound. I, I could definitely see... I don't know if I'd want there to be, but I could definitely see a Southbound too. I almost worry if there's a sequel, if... They won't be able to pull off the segues as yeah. well, or you but, know what I mean? But they could do an ABC's The Death thing, and that's a bad comparison because those movies aren't exactly top quality, but where you get different directors then to come in and make another That's what film. I'm, you know, even yeah. if it was different directors, I, I'm worried that right. they wouldn't be able to pull off the segues yeah. again. I would rather see this movie stand as its own entity and as a um, an example of what a good horror anthology movie can do. Yeah. Even though I don't think this is... This isn't one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. One of the best movies I've ever seen, but it's a great. Um, I'm a big fan of horror anthologies. There's actually one, supposedly coming out in the near future, um, and it's based around all the holidays, which is kind of ironic oh, okay. with Trick or Treat and Krampus. But I know Kevin Smith was talking about him, that, um, doing one of the segments on it, but. That's, hmm. That'd be interesting. That's neither here nor there. He's doing Kevin Smith is doing some interesting like, yeah, di- uh, stuff that's, you know, pretty disturbing now, like Red State and Tusk. Uh, Tusk. We're just watching now, f- trying to look for these things, but um, I can't tell if that's it or yeah, it's that's just probably a that could be it. And I love how this is supposed yeah. to look like the bottom of it. Anyway, guys, that's about it. We're gonna wrap it up. I recommend this film. Would you yes, recommend this? film? I would recommend it. Watch it. You know, it's actually not too scary i don't really think this film is that scary it'll gross you out with some it's gore it's creepy it's creepy but it's never like um scary which yeah, isn't a bad maybe thing. you could say that about a lot of horror films um so watch it let us know what you think yeah leave a comment i'm neil i'm sam Follow uh us next on... week oh yeah next week Let's is the witch next week. Um, actually, this could be an episode that comes out a little bit earlier than because we're very normal. excited to talk about this yeah. movie, which we'll I see. have heard no promises. I have heard good stuff about. I I kind of am scared because I don't want to get my hopes up too scary. high. Oh, I'm very scared. I'm very spooked. Um, yeah. So we're we're we've been excited for probably the past like five months or six months about this At one. least. So since the inception of Blood Feud, since Leo's performance in Inception, <laughs> Oscar worthy. Will well, Leo finally get his Oscar? He won the Grammy. He won the um, 
he won uh, the home run. He had a home run and won the World Series. So we're on Twitter at Blood Feud Pod. Yep. We're on Facebook, Blood Feud Podcast. Yep. And uh, you can find it. Well, I guess if you're listening to these, it's a no-brainer. But all of them are on YouTube. Tell your friends. Hey, yeah. If you got friends that you think might like it, share share a YouTube video. We need more friends. We'll we'll throw back. We can throw back. We can we can twerk. We can drink. We got that lean. We got that perk. Oh. Oh, that kind of rhyme too. Yeah, but I'm, I'm down to lean. I'm down to lean with you. Y'all got any of that scissorp? And we need, we need more friends. We need more friends. Yeah. Um, please send help. We are locked up in a room. Uh, they make us record these um all day every day. Um, please send help.